Hey guys, Will here with WTF Car Reviews and today we're going to be reviewing the all new 2023 Kia Sportage Plug-In Hybrid X-Line Prestige all-wheel drive. And a big thanks to David at Century Kia in Tampa, Florida for making this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below and if you're looking for a new car or SUV in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for David. And for those of you guys who don't know, the Sportage has been Kia's compact SUV since 1993. Fast forward 30 years and the fifth generation Sportage that you see here was released this year for 2023. And here we have the top of the line X-Line Prestige all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid. There are three power plants for the 2023 Sportage, starting with the base 2.5 liter four cylinder, cranking out 187 horsepower, 178 pound-feet of torque. Really not the most powerful motor, enough to get the Sportage to 60 around nine seconds. You can upgrade to the conventional hybrid, which mates a 1.6 liter turbo engine to a hybrid setup, cranking out 227 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, enough to get the Sportage to 60, closer to seven seconds. The top power plant for the Sportage is the 1.6 liter plug-in hybrid, which we have here, cranking out 261 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, enough to get the Sportage to 60, between six and a half and seven seconds. The plug-in hybrid Sportages are available in two different trim levels starting with the X-Line for the base price of $38,690 or the X-Line Prestige that we have here for the base price of $43,190. What else do we get for that money? Let's jump right in. So up front you notice your full LED headlamps, LED daytime running strip which is currently lit, LED fog lights down below, full front parking sensing, front facing camera, nice aluminum trim right beneath the updated Kia badge, Really clean front styling. I like the, all the light pattern with functional airflow in both of the corners. We're right next to the airport, so bear with me if there's quite a bit of noise, plenty of planes taking off. This is just about the only empty spot that I can find in this area. With the wheel and tire setup, we have these pretty nice contrasted black and silver 19 inch rims, additional side sensor for the 360. The tires are Michelin Primacy all season tires, dimensions being 235.55 R19. So with a square 235 setup and all wheel drive, the power should be put down pretty well. And with this 55 series sidewall, the ride quality should still be very good. We have some plastic cladding around the wheel well and rocker panel side skirt area. That should help you out with rock chips if you do take this X-Line off-roading. We get smart access for the driver and a front passenger. Black mirror with LED turn signal on and additional camera on the mirror helping us out with the 360. We get blind spot monitoring on the glass, blacked out roof rails, blacked out B pillar, and all black trim surrounding the window trim. Definitely a thumbs up. For that not a lot of shiny chrome anywhere on this vehicle out rear same rear wheel and tire setup the only difference is a smaller brake caliper the gas cap is not pushed to open i'll show you the latch is inside full led taillights sportage badge shout out century kia in tampa florida for helping make this review possible updated kia badge right in the center backup camera full rear parking sensing x-line badge in the right corner led third brake light and the wiper back here is hidden nicely underneath that third brake light. Kia and Hyundai are one of the only manufacturers that I've seen do that so far, but I like it. Down below you can get a good look at the exhaust tip. And speaking of the exhaust tip, let's fire up this 1.6 liter turbo plug-in hybrid, see if we can rev it up and hear how she sounds. All right, guys, that was the sound of the 1.6 liter turbo hybrid setup sold by Kia for the 2023 Sportage plug-in hybrid. And it sounds okay, making plenty of power though, 261 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, enough to get the Sportage to 60, under seven seconds. So very solid performance. What you see is basically what we get with the battery, electric motor, and the gas motor. We can shut this hood right down. No hydraulic struts for this price point. I would like to see hydraulic struts. And speaking of price point, I'll say a quick look at this window stick and see what we get on this 2023 Sportage plug-in hybrid X-Line Prestige. So the exterior color here is Vesta blue and it is a very sparkly blue metallic paint color. Standard features for the X-Line all-wheel drive plug-in hybrid. You can pause, take a look at all of these. Still very well loaded vehicle with the X-Line, but the X-Line Prestige all-wheel drive is fully, fully loaded. Here we get the Harman Kardon premium audio system, LED fog lights, LED projection headlamps, LED rear combination lights, smart cruise control, stop and go, blind spot monitoring, 360, highway driving assist, remote smart parking assist. That's the feature on this key file. Let me show you guys real quick. If you lock up this vehicle from the outside and then remote start, you just press and hold. It should fire right up and then you can press this forward button and check this out. The vehicle should start creeping forward after it straightens out the steering wheel. 
There we go. Look, it's just moving, moving, moving. I'm wondering, what if you get hit by it? But watch this. I'm going to step right in front. Boom. And it stops. Same thing with the reverse. You can press this back up button. And any second now, it's going to start backing right up. Pretty cool. And you just take a step right behind it. And boom. It turns the brakes right up. Cool, very impressive feature. We can take a quick look at the rest of the window sticker. So we get parking distance warning for the front, parking collision avoidance assist for the backup, remote smart parking assist, which we just demonstrated, memory seats up front, power adjustable front passenger seat, ventilator front seats, 12.3 inch supervision cluster, heated steering wheel, heated windshield, and alloy pedals. Options, 95 bucks for the cargo mat, carpeted floor mats that say X-Line on them are 175, 150 for the cargo cover, 350 for the Frameless auto dimming mirror with garage home link settings, 200 for the front skip plate. Total price before destination is 44,160 bucks after a $1,325 destination charge. Total price sitting at 45.8 or 4.85. Fuel economy 84 combined MPGE, two hour charge time with a 240 volt, 35 combined highway and city for the gasoline only. We have 34 miles of pure EV range two and 430 miles on the full charge. That's about it though, taking a step inside again, we get smart access for the driver and the front passenger. They just locked this up because the vehicle's been idling for too long. But up top, we get soft touch materials, wood trim outside of this aluminum door handle, two person memory seats, auto one touch for the front, power windows out rear, surrounding some piano black trim, four way adjustable mirrors, gushy soft Syntex armrest, solid storage down below too, you'll fit a 24 ounce water bottle and a foot long right next to it. Hard plastic for the frame, Harman Kardon sound system, and it sounds surprisingly good. Huge improvement compared to the base system. The seats are quilted, perforated, heated, and ventilated Syntex seats. Fully adjustable lumbar control. You can recline, drop, lift, and slide the seats. Taking a step inside, we can really check it out. So foot on the brake, engine start, stop, and everything fires right to life. But first thing we notice is the steering wheel is leather wrapped with the same color stitching, solid tendon to bolstering notch and nine and three fits really well in your hands. On the left side, volume and skip controls, voice commands, AM, FM, series. You can hang up and answer your phone calls and your favorites. On the right side, you can adjust your infotainment cluster with these buttons. And we get the radar cruise control and lane keep assist adjustments right below. We get two paddle shifters. I don't believe they control the transmission. I'm pretty sure it's for the regenerative braking, but it's still nice to get those auto headlamps, fog lamps. And on the right side, we have auto rain sensing wipers. Also an appreciated feature for a top trim. On the left side, we have our interior brightness, trunk release, gas cap release, traction control you can disable, electronic parking brake, tilt and telescoping steering wheel, and we get some aluminum pedals, which are currently wrapped in some white plastic. Aluminum outline air vents with some piano black outside of that. Stitched dashboard, we have dual 12.3 inch screens, and they look really high quality. The touch screen, we can take a quick look. It's also curved, similar to the new Ionic 5 and EV6. But here we have our PHEV map nav, phone, phone projection, voice memo, climate, valet, quiet mode. I don't have to read them all out. You guys can take a quick look at all features we have available. You can see we have available for the PHEV settings, EV range, energy information, charge management, and eco driving, all available in this screen, plus the power distribution to the right. The map, we can take a quick look at it. Pretty good response. The side to side is much more responsive than the actual zoom function, but the resolution is really good. If you go back to the home screen, well, actually my personal favorite to look at at all times will be the map, so we'll leave it there. Air vents right beneath, hazards in the center, and we have our climate control settings right down over here. And watch this. You see how we're currently looking at a climate setting? You press this top button right here, and it completely changes up. Now these dials adjust the volume and tune. And we have map, nav, seek, track, radio, media, and setup, all touch sensors instead of the climate. You press this one more time, it goes right back to the climate. Down below, we have this closable cubby. You can push it and close it with some piano black. Open it right back up. We have a 12 volt USB-A port and USB-C port, wireless charging pad right beneath. Engine start, stop, gear selector. We can check out the backup camera real quick. Excellent resolution with a 360 right next to it. Really one of the best crisp resolutions I've seen in most backup cameras. You can check out the different displays. We have the wider view, blind spot view, and a over the top trailer hitch view. You can do a full 360 of the Sportage. Unfortunately, it's white. It's not this nice blue color, but it's still a pretty cool feature. Not quite sure why you'd want to see this, but you can see it. One thing I really like are these tiles. You can actually see the tiles from this old slab we're currently sitting on. I'll show you guys the actual tiles right down below. See them? And you can actually pick it up on this 360 
when you put the vehicle in reverse. Since everything is electronic, since I just opened the door, it automatically put me back in the park. But still, you can take a quick look at this 360 one more time. You can really see the tiles that are right outside of this SUV. Really an incredible, incredible feature. You can see a clear display of the Hertz trucks also that we have right back there. Hopefully you can pick them up on camera. Huge thumbs up. You can go right back into park and it immediately returns us right back to our home screen. Drive mode selector. The drive modes include eco, sport, smart, and snow. We'll start the review off in eco, transition to sport, and just see what the differences are. Center differential lock for the all-wheel drive system, hill descent control, auto hold, pure EV mode. We have 34 miles of pure EV range. You can turn off the parking sensors and take a quick look at the camera at all time. Excellent. To the right, we have our cup holders. You can press this button and it pops out each cup holder and you can hide them right away. We can move this cord out of the way first and the cup holders hide. So now you can put a sandwich in here or whatnot. And you can press these buttons one more time and you can throw in some cups. You'll fit up to about 24 ounce bottles. The armrest is pretty soft, Syntex stitched material. The space is solid. You'll fit at least seven, maybe eight, 12 ounce bottles in there. The Glove box, we can pop this latch. It is damp, not lined with felt, but wouldn't be expected. And massive, you're fitting 25 plus license plates in there. Easily fit two pairs of shoes. More of that wood trim right up top. Hopefully I can pick it up on camera because the glare is kind of killing it. There we go, hopefully you pick up that wood. Anyway though, we have a frameless auto dimming rear view mirror with three garage home link settings on it. The interior lights are LED and we can open up the shade and moonroof. The shade opens up super quickly and a very large panel for this panoramic roof. We'll see how far it opens up, see if it goes all the way. Press one more time. It does not go any further than this. So why have such a huge piece of glass if it doesn't open all the way? I don't know. But it goes out basically to the end of the front row. Beautiful day today in Tampa, Florida, sunny and 88 degrees according to this 2023 plug-in hybrid sportage. We close this panoramic roof right up. Leave the shade open so when we hop out back you can see how much light is brought into the cabin. One thing I didn't mention, we have our heated and ventilated seats right over here and a heated steering wheel in the center. That's about it for the front seat. Let's hop out back, see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the material. So up top, we have hard plastic with some Syntex in the center and a Gucci soft Syntex armrest, aluminum door handle, and additional Harman Kardon speaker. Storage, you'll probably fit a 24 ounce water bottle, no nameplate as we step inside. Still have the perforated Syntex seats with solid bolstering for a back seat. Legroom looks really impressive. I'm a little bit over six feet tall sitting behind my seat settings and I still have at least six, seven inches of knee room. We have a hook right here, good for a bag. An additional hook here, perfect for a suit. And if you don't wanna use that for your suit, you can use this hook right up top. Each back seat has its own USB-C port and two air vents for the back passengers with some storage right below. Small hump for the exhaust or the drive shaft for this all wheel drive system, but really not that bad. The center passenger will still have plenty of legroom. Center cubby has a string, you pull the string and it's a pretty soft Syntex armrest. You'll fit 20 ounce bottles in there with no problem. Both front seats have map pockets and the passenger seat also has the same hook design. The light brought into the cabin is really impressive thanks to this massive panoramic moonroof. The light back here is LED. That's about it though for the back seat. Let's hop out to the cargo space, see how much space is offered back there as well as the overall quality of the materials. I really like this black trim that they have running all throughout the side profile. Black trim above this light pattern. To open up this trunk, there's a button underneath the cargo itself. And the overall space here is really impressive for a compact SUV. The step-in is pretty low, about an inch from my knee. So if you have older or smaller pets, they shouldn't have the toughest time hopping back here. Secret storage, we can see what we have going on underneath all these floor mats and cargo trays. We don't have much, but we do have a little bit. You throw some secret stuff in there. You fold those rear seats down 60-40 split, and I would expect you to fit up to a 65, maybe a 70-inch TV back here. Very spacious. You get a Harman Kardon subwoofer and two latches to fold those rear seats down. 12 volt back here, so if you have an electrically cooled cooler, you can plug it in, and when you arrive at your destination, you can have nice cold Food. That's about it though. We can shut this trunk right up with a click of a button. It gives you a second so you can take a step back and not get doofed in the head. That's about it though for the inside and outside of this all new 2023 Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid X-Line Prestige all-wheel drive. The name is quite the mouthful. Performance wise, we have over 260 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque, the most powerful Sportage available. And speaking of the performance, let's take this car out for a drive and see what it's got. All right guys, now that we've just about seen everything we need to see with the inside and outside of the all new 2023 
Kia Sportage plug-in hybrid. Let's take it out for a drive and see what it's got. My, per my first impressions though, the steering feels surprisingly on center. The throttle is very sensitive to be expected with a plug-in hybrid with a lot of electric torque. Really quiet in here too. You don't really hear the bumps. You don't really hear any wind noise. We don't have dual pane windows, just single pane windows, but still unbelievably quiet. The brakes feel nice and responsive. Yeah, in eco mode, the steering still feels pretty good. We'll give that guy a little bit of space. Try out an acceleration off the line in eco mode. We'll also try one out in sport, but eco mode on the gas. Good torque, yeah. Woo, oh, this guy's coming in high, but okay. Hope you pick it up. This torque is really impressive. You run over the bumps, you don't feel or hear them. Really well isolated vehicle. And the steering still feels really good when you're at higher speeds. Torque feels solid even at speed in eco mode. We'll throw it in the sport in one second, but just trying it out in eco feels very responsive, nice, nimble platform. And on concrete pavement, you don't really hear any road noise. It's impressive how well they're able to isolate you from the road. We'll try out a turning radius and body roll test right here on the brakes, which feel really good. It's helped with the regenerative braking right here, throwing it in way quicker than we should. Yeah, there's a little bit of body roll, but not much. Turning radius is pretty good. Come back out, good torque. We're just partially on the gas. And you can feel the gear shifts even in the pure EV mode because the engine is currently not on. Over the bump right here solid ride quality testing out the paddle shifters they actually do control the transmission i haven't seen many electric vehicles with paddle shifters that don't control the regenerative braking but here they control the transmission we can try it out in sport mode see what changes up all right guys sport mode no brake torque just on the gas good torque takes off Woo. nice yeah guys this thing can move and it's so well composed, you look down, you're going a lot quicker than you think you are. You can slow down a little bit, throw it in way quicker than we should. Ooh, body rolls a little bit, but it handles it pretty well. We can take a step out onto this multiple lane highway, open her up a little bit more. It looks like we're good. And as you see, we have the cameras for the blind spots right here on the gas. Ooh. Nice, to the turn. Good steering, it feels a lot better in sport too. We don't have to push it a whole lot farther. We can try out this lane keep assist and see how it works. Boom, yeah, see? Throws us right back into the lane. On the other side, throws us right back into the lane. Really cool feature, I wouldn't rely on it. Eventually it's gonna tell me to put my hands out on the wheel. But in the meantime, it keeps me well centered. I'm pretty confident in the system. One thing I just realized, we are still in manual shift mode, so we're just holding third gear but yeah, can't complain. This link keep assist is solid. It doesn't even tell me to put my hands in the wheel. I can do this all day. We can turn around right here, try out a real world turning radius, another acceleration too, and I'll catch right back with you. Well, before I catch right back with you again, every time you turn the turn signal on, we get the cameras here, which show us everything that's in our blind spot. All right, guys, real world turning radius. We'll check it out. Pretty sharp, not the sharpest, but on the gas. Oh my gosh, good torque out of nowhere. Woohoo! Not bad. We'll throw it into pure EV mode too. Oh, we can't do it in sport mode. We'll take it out of sport eco mode. Pure EV. And let's try it out. About half throttle. Good torque. Not bad. As you really lean into it, the engine turns on and you have a lot more power. But even with the pure electric, solid amount of power. And we can take our hands off the wheel and just let the lane keep assist do its thing really an excellent feature we have a pretty sharp turn coming up so i'm going to put my hands in the general area just in case but like in the meantime as you see no need for hands right here we got the twisty look at this look at this it guides us through the whole thing uh oh uh oh yep it figured it figured it out look at this no way this is such a cool feature all the way through the turn it says keep hands on the steering wheel but even still does the job you throw it in right here yep a little bit of body roll but not much about half throttle lean into it Ooh, coming out 
nice. But overall, guys, if you're looking for a really fuel efficient, spacious SUV, you don't need three rows, but you would like to get over 30, 35 MPGs. The 2023 Sportage plug-in hybrid is a great way to go. No, it's not quite as crazy fast as like the RAV4 Prime, but it's comparable in every other category. It's just as efficient, just as spacious. The tech is more impressive. I like this interior better. The heated and ventilated seats work excellently. If you're looking for an efficient, spacious two-row SUV, I would definitely recommend checking out the 2023 Sportage plug-in hybrid. And a big thanks to David and Carlos at Century Kia in Tampa, Florida for helping make this review possible. I'll leave a link to your inventory below, and if you're looking for a new car, SUV, or truck in the Tampa area, I would definitely recommend checking these guys out and ask for David or Carlos. And huge thanks to all of you for watching. I had a great time making this video. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. If you've already subscribed, thank you so much. You guys know the channel is just not possible without you, and I really appreciate the constant support. But again, if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. Leave a like too. It really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. That's how these videos get promoted to new people. Leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Let me know what you don't like. Leave a comment. Let me know if there's any specific cars, SUVs, or trucks you want to see reviewed on this channel. And I'll definitely try getting those videos for you ASAP. But other than that, again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope all of you have a great day.